morning. It's Sunday, June 18th. It's Father's Day. And I wish all of you fathers out there a happy and a healthy day. And I hope that you're surrounded by your loved ones, your children, and your grandchildren, and maybe even your great-grandchildren. And you go out and you have a wonderful afternoon. Maybe you go to the barbecue. Or you spend it on the beach, or you just sit around the table drinking a little coffee and having a piece of cake. Whatever it is that turns you on, I want all the fathers out there to have a great time. As I am preparing to have a great time on this Father's Day. In fact, one of my sons gave me a shirt for a Father's Day gift. Not that I needed another shirt. I had plenty of shirts. But still, on Father's Day, it was great to be remembered. And it was also great remembering bringing these children into the world and raising them successfully. And I think that's a wonderful achievement that you can say to people that you have raised your children successfully and you have watched them raise their children successfully. And for those of you who have done that, then you can consider that you've done very, very well. And that goes beyond finance and everything else. Because Raising your children successfully avoids a lot of the anguish that many people suffer in this country. And speaking of anguish, that's exactly what this country is suffering from. We are torn apart. And so on Father's Day, I don't want to be ugly and unhappy, but we have to recognize the fact that this country is in terrible, terrible shape. We have to recognize the fact that one major religious organization in this country is having a tremendous fight over female leadership. And the female leadership is being attacked by the power of the insurgent right wings of this religious persuasion. It's the Southern Baptists that are having this terrible, terrible situation. And this week, many, many members of the church leadership have been looking to oust women from taking part roles as pastors. This all started actually two summers ago when an insurgent group of ultra-conservative Southern Baptists declared themselves to be pirates, vowing to take the ship of the nation's largest Protestant denomination and steer it, move it, push it further to the right on issues like sexuality and race. So this group is at the core of demeaning the women in this particular Protestant denomination and holding them back from achieving leadership roles. Now those in the forefront of this attack were determined to stop what they viewed as rising liberalism and a drift away from the biblical truth. Many were outraged that one of their most prominent churches had ordained three women. Now, the opponents of this extreme right-wing group argued that the spirit of welcome could could help them stop their declining membership because this religious organization is in big trouble. And maybe it's in big trouble because they're too ultra-conservative. But now the ultra-conservatives refuse to bend and they continue to try and seize power. And they are accomplishing that. And so the ship is beginning to turn, so to speak, 
in the wrong direction because turning to the right will not increase their population or their popularity. Now this battle came to a head, it's my word back, came to a head in New Orleans at the Southern Baptist Annual Convention where the delegates moved to purge women from church leadership. And that's an early look into the psyche of much of evangelical America and the cultural direction of a key Republican voting bloc. And this is ahead of the 2024 presidential election. And this crackdown on women is about biblical interpretation, so they say. But it's not really that. It's much more. It's about the growing anxieties many evangelicals have about what they see as the swiftly changing norms around gender and sexuality in America. And I believe they're pointing at the rules that are governing the crazy book burners. They're worried about the trans, the LGD PTQ community and how it's affecting their church. And the interesting thing about this battle is that the women who are members of this church are not necessarily on the side of having women leadership. They are content with the fact that women can be withheld from leadership by this extreme white wing group. Because in their mind, that is not a biblical interpretation that women have the same leadership rights as men for some strange reason. And maybe it's because of the way the U.S. was brought up and the sexuality that involved the lives of women. Remember, women couldn't vote for the first 170 years of our country, right? So women go have been viewed by many, many groups as subservient to the men. And it's only recent times where women have risen to achieve equal opportunities with men, or so-called equal opportunities. They're still not being paid as much as most men in the same profession. And so this is a very interesting battle that's going on in the evangelical arena. And who knows, it might even affect the sexuality within the evangelical community. How about if the women rose up and rebused their male counterparts and refused to become pregnant? What would, what would the evangelicals do about that? with their declining population. So while they have this right-wing male group tearing apart the Southern Baptists, the women can still fight back if they see a need. And they have a weapon that they can use. For sex is a very powerful emotion. So I'm in favor of the women withdrawing their sexual favors to all the men in the Southern Baptist community. And let's see what happens about the leadership role then. Wouldn't that be an interesting phenomenon? I would love to see that splashed across the newspapers. Women of the Southern Baptist Church are now refusing to have sex with their male partners. A revolt against those who are against female leadership. No more sex for these old guys or young guys until they come around and change their views on women in leadership roles in the Southern Baptist religious organization. So I leave you with that crazy thought and I hope you have a great day. Bye. <music>